let's shift to talk a little bit about um, IP. And in particular, this administration has been particularly bad on, on drug pricing and uh, drug IP uh, and uh, kind of a price controls. I mean, it, it, there's a number of price controls they've got on, on the best-selling drugs, uh, but, but expanding from there. So, so how do you, how, what is your sense of IP protection, particularly right now in the, in the healthcare space and government intrusion into that space? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, we, it's a real disaster. Um, to, you know, and, uh, and, it's and it's 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 a disaster. It's kind of a slow rolling out disaster because we're not going to see the ultimate effects of all of this for years to come. Mm -hmm. But um, but we really we crossed a Rubicon in the past four years. Um, you know, so for the very first time, um, the government actually in the Inflation Reduction Act, um, uh, uh, one of uh, the administration, the Biden administration, um, uh, you know, signature, you know. Uh, 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 laws that they promoted and, and got helped get enacted um, imposes directly price controls on yeah. on on drug patents. I mean, I I mean explicitly. Uh, I mean something that's never been done before in this country ever. Um, the the law. I mean, so this isn't like an agency interpretation of an ambiguous law. This is direct. Here, here are you know the 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 national health services are to, to identify the top ten selling drugs and to impose what they think is a reasonable what is a fair return a fair re, uh, price that they should charge for that. So how do they do this without legislation? Because I assume this was not legislation. Oh, it's it's no, this, is, the, this is in the, the Inflation is, Reduction yeah. Act. Yes. Yeah. I mean, one of one. I was at a conference a year and a half ago where um, where the former director of the patent office said that the Inflation Reduction Act is one of the greatest pieces, uh, most significant pieces of patent legislation ever enacted by Congress um, for for this for this reason. I mean, price controls on patents have been proposed in Congress since the beginning. I mean, because England has something like that. Hmm. The government can dictate and take over uh, patents because they're they're viewed as gifts. Queeth by the crown, and so what the crown giveth, the crown can take it the way yeah, it yeah. wants. So, and the United States has always taken the opposite view, and it's law. And and, and there have always been collectivists and leftists, and opposed to, uh, and even libertarians at times opposed to uh, patents, and have proposed like, okay, then you know these are monopolies, and we should control them. And it's always been rejected, but they enacted it. And um, and um, so why was not a big a deal made of this at the time? I mean, it was it was kind of. I don't remember much talk about this aspect of that. There's a lot of talk about the spending, but not much about this. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it really was. It was just well. I mean, the Inflation Reduction Act. I mean, it's one of these massive omnibus, yeah. you know, thousands yeah. and thousands of pages. God knows what else is in there. <laughs> well, that's the other thing that was passed as an omnibus bill, so it only need fifty one uh, Senate. So it was bit yeah. not. The whole point of an omnibus bill was it was limited to budgetary issues. Yeah, well, was, this but, is a budgetary issue because it saves the government money uh, by imposing well, these price I, controls. Because then Medicare and Medicaid isn't. So you can see also again a confirmation of the objectivist principle that controls yeah. and statism breeds more controls and statism. You know, so uh, you know because what was started as oh well you know a minor say quote safety net as they were saying back in the 60s becomes the basis for justifying outright explicit price controls now there's 10 lawsuits actually that are proceeding against uh the government now uh, uh, on the ira that was brought by all, all drug manufacturers also the u.s chamber of commerce has brought a, a lawsuit and uh, uh pharma the trade association representing drug many uh innovators has brought a lawsuit um you know, and they're they're and they're arguing takings and due process, and yeah. um, you know, they've got a and and these are some really strong arguments. Um, but you know, the fact that they're having to go through this process, like I said, this has never been done before. Um, and you know, and the patent system has been a driver of the U.S. innovation and in, in medicine and biotech. I mean, it's undisputed. I mean, you know, more than almost 60% of all new drugs are to this day, even with all of our controls, are still invented in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we are leading the world in, in medical care innovation and especially in new drugs. And um, and this is just, I mean, as we all know, we, we've seen it again and again and again, price controls, government controls kill this. 
Um, they kill the ability of innovators to create. They kill the ability of, of, of capitalists to then deploy in the marketplace the ability of, this, uh, of these new innovations. So uh, what do you think the chances of these lawsuits uh, succeeding, particularly given the the pretty good Supreme Court that we have on on certain issues? Yeah, so <laughs> so um, if this was in any other area other than patents, I'd be like, I would be fairly confident that the U.S. Supreme Court would probably protect them because they've been really fantastic in the past, especially the past two years, two years on on mm -hmm. Aikens issues, um, and and protections of of property rights against government takings, uh, government regulations, and and and, and eviscerations of property rights. Um, but patents are uh, an intellectual property, thanks to the libertarians, have confused a lot of the justices, um, and especially. Um, Justice Thomas. Um, Justice Thomas has has become captured by this kind of classic in, or now classic libertarian argument that patents are just monopolies. Um, and um, and the other side knows that. And so they exploit that. So they 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 push cases that massively expand, you know, the administrative powers of the of the government and the regulatory state. Uh, as patent cases, because they know they can peel Justice Thomas off on those issues then, because mm -hmm. then he used them through this this lens of patent law and, uh, as monopolies, and that therefore the government should should restrict them and get rid of them. Wow, I, di I didn't realize he'd gone that far. Yeah, he's real. He's one of the worst justices right now in the Supreme Court on patents. Yeah, what's what's Gorsuch like? Gorsuch is one of the best, yeah, <laughs> and I, I don't just say that because he quoted and cited me once. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so uh yeah no, he he he's he he's fantastic he really he understands these are property rights that they're protected as property rights they're they're they are therefore under the constitution they deserve the same due process and takings protections and other types of uh, uh, uh protection yeah. of the constitution but and this is and actually uh, Gorsuch and Thomas have have split. You know, their their case, there are patent cases where Thomas writes the majority opinion and Gorsuch dissents, mm -hmm. um, and um, and uh, yeah, because Thomas is going in a bad way.